What's up guys, it's Catherine, and today we're going to be learning about glazing. Um, this is a technique that I get asked about a lot. Some people don't even know that it exists, but it's really helpful and you can actually do this with oil paint or even acrylic paint. People ask me all the time, like, why do you do the whole gray thing first? The same way that like the old masters and stuff worked, it's called a grisaille, which is a gray toned underpainting. But, um, also glazing is synonymous for stumbling in this video, like they mean different things. But the technicality of it is not important because it's the same process. So, glazing and scumbling, I'm going to be using that just at the same time instead of saying glazing and scumbling because that, anyway. Glazing. What is glazing? The noun of glazing is a thin, oily, or fat, transparent layer of, of paint spread over an underlayer. As an, a verb is the action of spreading fat, oily paint over an underlayer. <laughs> Starting with basics and applying more and more layers in different tones to build up um, a final piece instead of trying to mix all of your layers in the on, in one layer. So the idea of this is like what I do with my grays. So I make a whole bunch of full painting of just grayscale and then I apply colors on top of it later. Even during the grayscale process I am using the same layers. So um, actually like right here this little window is just a solid color but at the end I'm gonna have a variation of colors it's gonna look something more like that or something more like this the science behind it is um, if you think about light light travels through all the layers and all the colors of each of those layers bounces off the canvas and then travels back to your eye and the, all the colors are mixed in your eye um, and if you think about black if you've painted something black um, all of the colors of light are absorbed by the black and no light bounces back to your eye so actually what you're seeing is the absence of color. Oil paint is translucent or well there's there's opaque oil paint, transparent oil paint, and semi-transparent oil paint. You should allow each layer to dry in between. Fat over lean. So you apply a layer of paint that has a different amount of medium or a different type of medium than the layer below it. It will actually dry at a different speed. So if it dries quicker than the layer below it, if the layer below is still wet and you've applied a faster drying layer on top, cracking can occur. And this is my medium it's water bottle lids, which I don't waste as much by putting it in a smaller container. Okay, so the nice thing about glazing too is that you can actually wipe it away um, if you have something that's too opaque. And you do want to start with the most opaque layers first. You have to do it in order of like opacity. So you have to understand too um, which paints are opaque and which paints are transparent. The brush that I would recommend using for um, like a lot of glazing would be a mop brush, which it looks like a makeup brush. It's called a mop brush, but it just looks like this. Like you never want to like put the full thing in the pigment. You just want to like get it on the top so you can just kind of... The benefits of glazing is that it increases like the luminosity, the luminosity, the richness, and the depth of um, your figures or subjects, whatever. That's unachievable by just having like certain layers just mixed. It can just unify your entire painting. So like, say that I was doing a painting of like something that was inside and it was dark, but there was like a candle lit. Uh, the color of a candle is like kind of orangey, um, yellowy. So I would do, if I wanted to unify that painting, did everything in like actual color, but I wanted to unify it by just like glazing the entire thing with like this like orange. So next question, how much medium do you mix into your paint? Um, so you generally use some type of medium in every layer, um, mostly because it just makes it a lot easier to deal with, um, but you increase the amount of oil as you 
um, increase the number of layers that you have. So maybe like in your first layer, you might just use about 10%, 20% in your second layer, and so forth. Um, however, if you go too thin, you'll know because uh, you'll have brush strokes and something that you want to be smooth. Um, so if that's the case, it's not, it's not a big deal. You don't have to worry about that because you can just add more paint and it fixes that um, issue. As you can see down here, these should be in shadow. So instead of trying to put black on them now, what I'm actually going to do is take, after this dries, I'm going to use black paint right here on the edge of this mattress so that it looks like it's in shadow. Okay, and the second question is, do you mix your medium into your paint on your palette as like when you're mixing it, you know, all at once? And the answer is no. I was trained to do, or well, to mix um, linseed oil into my pigments uh, beforehand, but that makes your paint dry so slow. So I decided not to do that when I kind of went off on my own path. I started using a dryer, which is Galkid. There's other kinds of dryers, more natural kinds, whatever. Um, but I use Galkid, so I use it on all my layers, really, right as of right now. That's going to be changing soon. But I mix just as I'm using it. So I will put a little dab of paint on my palette. I'll, it will stay as pure and as close to just normal paint as possible until I'm about to use it. And the professional thing to do is use a palette knife to mix in your little um, percentages of medium with your paint instead of using your paintbrush because that's... Um, you can get a little bit too much paint up inside of your ferrule and that will actually ruin your paintbrushes sooner. So try not to do that if you can. Okay, so just some thoughts about glazing. One of the hardest things for, m for me to kind of understand in terms of glazing was when to glaze. Like, when is it appropriate to glaze? Because, like, you can explain the, the concept, the process, why to do it. I would say when you're doing an oil painting that you should always do an underpainting because you're, I think it just looks better just based on the process, based on the science behind glazing. It just looks better to do an underpainting. Um, one of the things I've recently come across is people doing a, an umber underlayer, then a gray underlayer, and then the color on top. So doing multiple layers like that, um, and then even below the umber layer would be the um, tone of the canvas, which is when you use your mineral spirits. So like your mineral spirits, you never use mineral spirits in an over layer because it's just that will make your medium or your paint too thin so you use that in the um the first the toned layer and that's just to like give you a nice like um surface to kind of paint on top of it does tone your does give a full like tone to your painting as well always 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 know that you're going to be glazing when you're doing portraits so you have your under your um grisaille which is your gray under layer and then you're going to be glazing color on top however with portraits um there's like two kinds that of glazing I, that I would classify them as like a full glaze where you're doing a full tone um, of like full yellow over your entire thing or like fully blue over your whole surface and not paying too much attention to the details with your face like when you're doing a portrait um, you would tone your shadows differently than you would tone your highlights that would be a reason what, like for the glazing to be different colors like that and then even if you're doing a, a portrait, you might even um, glaze like veins and stuff like that before you did like your over, um, like the skin layer on top or like blush or something. All the layers kind of mesh together too, they sort of flatten. 
Um, they might be a little bit opaque at first, but over time they will like flatten together and so they become more transparent as well. Um, so if you're, if you glaze a little bit too much, sometimes um, you lose your grisaille in the back, but just over time it starts to flatten out. It starts to become more translucent and you can see your, all the details of your grisaille um, later on. So it's not all lost if you put too much paint on like I've done before. So, okay. And then some notes about mediums. Um, there's a whole slew of mediums that you can use and they all do different things. This is not a video about mediums. I just want like, cause I, I can do a video that talks about mediums and like how they're used and what they're used for and stuff. But that's another, another video for another time. Um, but this one is just about process of glazing and what it's used for. So, like I said, that was like one of the hardest things for me when I started oil painting was like, when do I glaze? What is it used for? What are the benefits of it? So, I mean, sure, there are plenty of videos on YouTube that were like, this is how you do it. You thin it out. And like, that's simple. But like the application and like seeing how someone else will use glazing and then using that knowledge and applying it to your own um, painting, that's the hard part. For me, I use it most in my, like, for example, when I'm doing my grisaille. I was showing earlier, I think, uh, like, the window pane is all gray, just like one flat color, and then I'll build up some more, like, values, and then I build up more values, so I just use it instead of just, honestly, I know it's time to glaze something when I've gone too far, I've just, like, put too much paint on there, it's just too wet, I'm not getting any detail, I'm not getting, like, my white and my blacks are mixing, I'm not getting straight black, I'm not getting straight white, it's time to stop. And I'm just gonna let that dry and come back the next day and do it. And that's one of the hardest things I think for myself to like let it go because I like to have things worked out and done before I move on to something else because I forget where I was going with something or what I was doing or what I like what it looked like in my head. Like I kind of I forget that. So it is hard for me to like accept that it's time to like stop and like go back and do something later. But that is like the greatest part about oil painting is that you can come back later and do more layers on top. And this area right here is another example of how glazing has really enhanced it. So this part right here, this section is like gray with like some black and it's pretty simple or it's not a whole lot of gradation, whatever. This area down here actually looked exactly like that, same as it did up there. But actually glazing and adding this black line right here just made so much more depth and stuff. It's a lot more successful. It look, looks a lot more like what it's supposed to now that it has this layer of white and this layer of um, black as well as up here and stuff. I guess that would be a good way to kind of understand glazing is that you are to do general tones first and build up your layers to finest last. And also like your finer details are going to be the fattest and your, your broader details are going to be the leanest. So it's going to be mostly pure paint, closest thing to pure paint in your bottom layers and then the closest thing to like a medium and, or sorry, the most um, thin out, most fatty, most oily pigment is going to be for those final layers. Make a video every uh, Wednesday and every Saturday, and you can click here to become a Catherine Siskin for updates on the videos that I post on those days. Bye. Glazing. There's like a happy medium for mediums. An umber. Um, I think that's helpful. Happy medium for medium. <sighs> yeah.